Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use CSS to transform your form from this to this. In the process of learning this, you're going to learn just more than transforming your form to look awesome. You're also going to learn some CSS tips and tricks and you're also going to learn how to use the browser console for custom CSS. But before we start, if you've been looking forward to knowing how to do something like this, please hit the like button. Thank you very much. Now this tutorial applies to any form at all but in this tutorial i'm using the bricks native form and it is just a simple trick but the technique to doing this is very similar to any other form you're going to use so the first thing you're going to do is to bring up your inspector panel because in the bricks form you cannot select the element individually for example this is a bricks form you can't it's just an element it's a, it's a module so in the front end, we want to piece apart the component that makes up this form and style them to get this. And it's going to be very simple. So go ahead and hit F12 to bring up the inspector panel. Your inspector panel might look a little bit different depending on the browser you're using. I'm using Google Chrome. So we're going to go into elements. Uh, the arrangement is somewhat similar. So you're going to be able to follow along. So the first thing we want to do is to identify these elements. Uh, so I'm going to click on this button. This button allows you to select an element on the page to inspect it. So I'm going to click here and then I'm going to just click. Yeah, you see, I can select just this one or just this one. I'm going to go right here to select both of them. Now, what I'm looking for is the parent of these two elements. I'm looking for the parent of the input and the button. So we've selected this. I'm going to click here to expand it. And when I click here, you can see that the input is selected when i click here you can see that the button is selected so the parent is this form so what we want to do is to style that parent and apply a css display to it we want it to display a css grid i'm going to right click here and go to copy selectors because i want to copy the selector of this form i want to copy a unique selector for this form you could also look at this id all the different attributes here the class and decide which one you want to use but a simple way is to just right click copy selector once you do that we want to go to the inspector panel css uh you know inspector sheet to be able to write a css to do that so i'm going to come here and then i'm going to click on this you see it's saying new style rule i'm going to click on that plus sign and then i'm going to go to inspect and I will just paste that selector and then I'll start writing my CSS. So the open and close braces. Now, what I want to do is to make this to display grid. So I'm just going to say display grid. Uh, you could see some changes there. And then the grid template columns, I want it to be, I want to divide it to 10. The different ways you could do it, I mean, uh, the most fundamental way to do it is just to write one if our 10 times, okay? But uh, if we write one if our 10 times, we're going to divide this into 10, but we don't want to do that. But now, uh, before we write that, I'm going to go back to that form. Uh, we have already set it to display grid, and you can see that it has the label grid. So I'm going to click on that label. Now, that label is going to give us a visual representation of how many grid columns that we are going to have. So, uh, I'm going to go back there. So if I write one FR, it's just giving us just one column. If I write one FR again, sorry, that was F. All right. So it's giving us two columns. If I add the third one, one FR is giving us three. Now we want 10 and we don't want to write 10 times. Okay. But there is a way to do it. You write uh, repeat. Now we want it to repeat 10 times. Okay. And we want it uh to be one fr for each of those 10 times okay but uh to prevent things like overflow you want to set a minimum maximum size of these each of these grid cells and uh, to do that we're going to replace this one fr with min max open and close bracket and the 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 maximum the minimum value will be zero and the maximum will be one fr now that gives us 10 columns and the next thing we want to do is we want to go to this input so let's go back to element and let's select this and i'm going to right click and copy selector i'll paste that so what is doing automatically it selects the div and says we want the first child of that div because it makes it unique to that selector so that this css is not going to apply to any other 
uh, element inside that form. So, uh, so we want this particular one, the input wrapper, we want it to span seven. So we're gonna say grid column. So this means how many column do you want to span? So span seven. So you span seven, and we could just use this as a baseline and just say end child two. But let's just see uh, what it's going to give us if we copy this selector. Oh, you can see that it gives us a different kind of wrapper or a different kind of selector. You could go ahead to write the uh, grid column. We want it to span three. Remember that we had 10, so we want to separate it into three and 10. We want to share it between three and 10. So we have three and we have 10. We could go ahead to clean up this CSS because we really don't need these two. Uh, and because this class is unique to this element inside this form. So there's no need to over um, qualify it by adding multiple selectors to it. Now, uh, we still have some issues, some, some layout issues here. So we have a very big gap here and we want to find out why do we have this gap. Let's go back and then we're going to take this uh, inspector tool and we're going to point. Now we can see that the color of that gap is green. Now, in the inspector, uh, the inspector tool, they, these things are color coded. For example, green stands for padding. If it is orange or, yeah, I think orange, orange stands for margin. Now, if we go to compute it, you will see that padding is always in green and margin is always in orange. You can see that. So if we select this, we can see that it has a bottom padding of 20 right so what we want to do is to make sure we take that bottom padding off let's go back and that was this one so we're going to go to padding bottom but if we want to use uh, logical properties i'm going to link a video on how uh, what logical properties mean so we're going to say padding block end that is the padding bottom and we're going to unset it so right now we don't have that padding anymore now we're going to go to the overall wrapper and we're going to set our padding to let's say 8 pixels and we're going to give it a background color of white. Uh, C. All right, so it's taking shape. So what we're going to do is to turn off these grid labels for now. So let's come here and turn it off. K. Okay. Now, once we've done that, let's take this down a little bit. So I'm just going to make it like 0 0.25 M. Did I say 25? Right. And then I'm going to give it a border radius of, let's say, 0 0.5 M. Now, that looks good. But one more thing, we do not want this border within. So we're going to take away that border. To take away that border, we need to know which element has that border. So let's do, I'm gonna show you one more thing you can do. Uh, so we are going to select this, okay? Now, to know which one has the border, we still go here, we see there's no border here, okay? No border. So we're gonna expand this, select the input, and we can see that the input has a border of one pixel. So I'm gonna right click, and then I'm gonna copy selector for that input. We're gonna go here, and we're going to paste. Now it gives us the unique ID of that, and then we're gonna just say border none, and that border is gone. And you can see this works well, and it's kind of responsive too. I mean, so once you do that, you're gonna copy the whole of this CSS, and then you're gonna go inside your builder, whatever, or your style sheet, and you're going to paste it. So in this case, I'm gonna go into bricks, and I'm gonna select that form, and I will paste that. But then, uh, let's say you wanted to use this form in multiple places so i'm going to first of all i'm going to just select that form go to style css and i just want to drop it there and you can see that works but let's say i have another form that i didn't paste that you can see that uh, the problem is that that form the second form doesn't behave that way uh, so what we're going to do is now first of all our border is back 
But what are we going to do? So let's see why the border is back. The input still has a border when we said it should be on set. Okay, so we have not seen that CSS declaration. All right, so the problem here is that the input, the form field changes the ID dynamically. So we cannot use the ID. So instead, what we're going to do is we are going to use the attribute type because this form field ID constantly changes depending on, you know, anytime you refresh the page. So what we're going to do is instead of using the form field, we are going to uh, just say root because this changes to root because the, the ID of the form we are using is the ID of this element. That's why it changed to root. So we're just going to say root and then we're going to say the input type, which is the attribute. So the attribute uh, selector is a square bracket. So we're just going to say type equals to email. Now, how did I know that it's type equal to email? Because it says here type equal to email. So I'm, I'm selecting an attribute, an object with an attribute of type email, and then I'm going to save it. And you will see that that has applied the styling to it. You can see it here. Now, what if you have more than one form that you want to style this way? What you need to do is to apply a class to it. So what I'm going to do here is to take this form and apply a class to it. So I'm just going to say a subscription form. Let's just say sub form. And now I'm going to copy these declarations from the ID. And then I'm going to paste it in the class. I'm going to save it and we still have the same the same result so any form i want to apply this styling to i simply go there and apply the class of sub form and voila it applies so you could do this and keep it as a utility class isn't that awesome if you find this interesting so far please go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel like i mentioned earlier this applies to any kind of form all you need to do is to learn how to identify the element that is wrapping both the input and the button and style them accordingly. And one more thing before we go, if you like this awesome sidebar here, it's a sidebar navigation builder for Bricks. It's a component that I built and it's available. So I'm going to put a link in the description for it so you could get this sidebar at gomroad.com. Uh, and uh, you will love it, I promise you. All right, until next time, do have a great day. Bye.